My brothers and sisters, you are now watching the Gamer 2323, so just forget about the chores you're supposed to do. Put your feet up, get your Kool-Aid, fried chicken, popcorn, get whatever you may need. And I hope you enjoy the video. It's the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't feel like doing nothing. When I say nothing, I don't even feel like talking. I just feel like sitting down and playing games. That's it. I don't feel like doing jackals. But trying to get these reviews out, man. There's so much stuff going on between the games, the holiday season, spending time with family, man. Fallout 4, the Bloodborne DLC. Lord have mercy. But anyway, yeah, so I had beat to uh, Rise of the, of, and again, like, when I got Fallout 4 and Rise of the Tomb Raider that same day, I didn't play Tomb Raider for, like, that first, like, week and a half. I was just playing nothing but Fallout. I eventually finally got to uh Tomb Raider, so got to do that Rise of the Microtransactions <laughs> uh, review. This will be my review of uh, Rise of the... Uh, Tomb Raider again. I don't even feel like talking, but I'm gonna try to force this junk out of me, <laughs> you know, cause Lord have mercy! Buttermilk biscuits, mashed patata, sweet potato pie, I mean, chicken, oxtails, uh, turkey, um, stuffing. I mean, Lord have mercy. What did I not eat? <laughs> I'm just I'm still in hibernation mode. I'm gonna try to just force it out of me. So yeah, this will be my review of a uh, Rise of the Tumor. I'm probably have my Fallout review sometime in December. Bloodborne DLC just came out, so I'm probably gonna do you know a little uh, playthrough of that as well, cause <laughs> you know what. Anyway, so Rise of the uh, Tomb Raider, you know, this was the uh, sequel to the uh, reboot that came out in 2013. Um, I did enjoy the reboot, but I thought the, I thought not necessarily the story. I thought the character development was pretty weak. I didn't care about nobody in that story aside from Lord Croft, you know, and because of it was a tact on the, you, you want to know the definition, the epitome of attack on multiplayer you look no further <laughs> than that reboot that came out in 2013 and rise of the tumor this said you know what we're gonna just uh, do the story this time around people still complaining about it. it's like you it's, it's like you can't win you know they had uh they had a on you know they had an online and the last one but it was tacked on and this one they said okay we're just gonna do the story people still complain about it you know just how gamers are you know so but so rise of the uh the uh, tumor i played it beat it um, is it as good as you've been hearing, man? And uh, again, this game, because it came out the same day as Fallout 4, I'm hearing that, you know, it's not really selling all that well, and because it's right now only on the Xbox One as far as consoles go, uh, you know, I'm hearing it's not selling that well, but nonetheless, man, uh, if you have an Xbox One, or you don't want to wait for it to come out on, on a PS4, you plan on buying an Xbox One, is it worth the pickup? Is it worth the sixty dollars, especially because it's only a single player game? Um, let's find out right now. Is Rise of the Tomb Raider worth the sixty bones? So the uh, story of Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, 
Pretty much it's about microtransactions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. No, so the uh, story of Rise of the Tomb Raider, pretty much long story short, you're playing with Laura Croft or Lara Croft, you know, uh, and she is trying to continue the journey of her late dad, Laura Croft, and she is in search of a mystical power known as the divine source that is said to be capable of human immortality. Of course, in a game like this, there's always a bad guy involved that's looking for the exact same thing <laughs> and is no different in this game. So the main villain in this game, his name is Constantine, and he is leading this group known as Trinity. And they are looking for the exact same thing that Laura Croft is looking for. And who knows what their intentions are. You just don't want something that powerful to fall into the wrong hands. So it's like a race to whoever can find the divine source first. And, you know, Laura Croft, you know, she, you know, she has to fight her way through, through all these things. And then towards the end, it's like this twist and stuff, some things happen. And that's pretty much what Rise of the Tomb Raider is about. Uh, the story is like, I say 15 through, through 20 hours. It's a pretty, uh, decent length, uh, story. And it's a pretty good story. I mean, in the 2013, um, Tomb Raider, uh, I enjoyed that game, but I thought the best part about that game was the gameplay. And I still think that's the best part in this game, but I thought the story in this game was better told. I thought the pacing was better, especially the character development. Them characters in that reboot Tomb Raider 2013, trash. <laughs> I didn't care about not one character aside from Lord Croft. In this game, the characters are better. I, I wouldn't say no characters really stand out, but they are better. So, uh, no really, I mean, the, uh, villain, Constantine, he's a pretty good villain. I mean, he, I, I, I wouldn't say, like, he has any, you know, uh, you know, moments that, like, really is like, god dang. <laughs> he doesn't have none of those moments, but I think the villain they had in the 2013. <laughs> The villain they had in 2013, the villain in, in this game is way better, you know. Uh, so I, I will say the character development in this game is better, you know, from uh, Laura Croft to uh, uh, Jacob to Constantine to uh, Joan to Jonah, which is her friend. I thought the character development in this game was way better than what they did in the 2013 one. The next-gen graphics in uh, this game, of course, this game is running at 1080p. Do it with me. 30 frames. Did you think I was going to say 60 frames per second? Not on these consoles, baby. <laughs> it's 1080p. 30 frames per second at all times. But yeah, so it is uh, 1080p. 30 frames, uh, 30 frames per second. But I mean, from a graphical standpoint, this game looks really, this is one of the best looking games so far, uh, this year. You know, from, uh, from, from, uh, the lighting to the textures to the, uh, details. You know, this game just looks really good, man. When, when you're on top of, uh, mountains, or cliffs and you're just like looking out and you're seeing like all of this stuff this game looks really good man you know so uh the graphics are uh, solid uh moving on to the uh gameplay just like just like i said what made you know the 2013 tomb raider you know a pretty good game i thought the best part about that game was the gameplay they pretty much took the gameplay from that tomb raider put it in this game and just improved on some things so i mean this gameplay is it's a really fun game to play not one time during this playthrough did i get bored playing this game there's just always something you know to do in this game so it's a really fun game to play from upgrading your weapons to upgrading your gear to uh crafting new i can't remember if you could craft items in the 2013 tomb raider but but you can craft items in this Tomb Raider, you know, from finding all of these collect, there's so much stuff to like. They have so many collectibles in this game. That's one of the, that's one of of the things that I noticed. There are so many things in this game to like collect, and it's like, god dang, <laughs> you know. So they so they got that, you know. Of course, they have the uh, tombs in a you know in this game. So you know, you so you can go through these tombs and then try to solve it, and then you know, a lot you know secrets and stuff like that. Uh, when you're in those uncharted moments, you know, and all the, and all this stuff is going on, you're like, I can't believe I'm playing through this right now. That's funny. You know, Laura Croft is screaming like she's getting smashed. And like, I swear to God, <laughs> I had to turn down my TV. Cause when Laura Croft starts, starts screaming, it's like, is that boy, why the, <laughs> is that boy 
What? Is he watching porn in there? Like, what's going on? Like, when Laura Croft starts screaming and she starts falling and stuff, I'm like, God, where's my remote? <laughs> I'm gonna turn it on your TV. But no, it, it, it's just a fun game and game to play. This game is really fun to play, just how it was in the 2013 Tomb Raider. A fun game to play, but they made improvements and even put some new stuff in this game. So it's a really fun game to play, man. Um, but now we gotta move on to those, uh, <clears throat> microtransactions. Now, the microtransactions, uh, there are a lot of them. I think, I, I'm not sure the exact amount. It's either 300 or a little over, <laughs> or a little over 300. And I'm like, okay. And in my first playthrough, I completely ignored, I, like, I ignored the microtransactions. It's true. At times, I, I, at times, I forgot this game had microtransactions. I was like, where are they? <laughs> you know, but, no, you actually do have microtransactions in this game. But the only way that I can explain it is, is almost useless. I feel like the microtransact, I feel like it's out, it's, it's like out of place. I feel like this game didn't even need them. They just put it in the game, you know, to, you know, make an extra dollar, you know. So the micro transactions in this game is pretty much you like get these cards you can either unlock the cards or purchase these cards and i think the highest price is like three like three dollars and it goes from the bronze pack to the silver pack to the gold i'm like what the freak am i playing 2k <laughs> you know so they got cards in this game but they're micro transactions and if you equip these cards you know whatever the card does then you know that's what it'll do in, in the game so some of these cards they'll increase the uh you know uh weapon power you know or it'll increase or it'll decrease you know the uh you, you know the uh dam the, the dam the damage that these enemies do to you and i mean it's some stuff like like if you kill like a certain amount of people you know stealth kills then it'll make you invincible for a while i mean there's there's a lot of these micro transactions in this game that just pretty much make the game more easy to play through and it's like okay but in a game like this that's only a single player game I don't know. It just feels out of place. I just really feel like this, like they didn't even need to put microtransactions in this game because I don't really see anyone buying them. <laughs> I mean, if you really buy these microtransactions to play through a story, to try to make the game more easy when it's not even that really hard to begin with. I just feel like they're out of place. Like, yes, you, yes, your guns can do more damage or you might decrease, you know, the, uh, damage that you take from these, you know, enemies, but it's like, you're gonna pay for that in a single player game? It's not even that hard? Like, really? <laughs> I did just, the microtransactions in this game, over 300 or 300, they just feel out of place. I, I just, I had, me personally, I had no use for them whatsoever. The only time that I did look at them <laughs> is when, you know, you can actually, again, you can unlock some stuff, you know, so I had these packs to unlock and then that's when I seen them, I'm like, oh, so this is the deal with it. But it's pretty, it's pretty pointless. It's a pretty, it's pretty pointless. I don't even really had, I had no use for them in this game, but yes, the microtransactions are there, but they just feel out of place. Last but not least, the replay value. It is very important when a game has replay value, especially these days, because we all know this hobby known as gaming is not cheap, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but this game, even though it's only a single player game, it is a 15 through, through 20 hours. It is a pretty, uh, it's a, it's a good length, you know, uh, story. And again, there's so much collectibles. You have the challenge tombs in this game. You have the optional side missions to do. It actually has more re, you know, more replay value than you would think. You know, this was a game that I thought, you know, I might play through it one or, two times and then get rid of it but i actually i plan on keeping this game this this game i think i'm gonna keep this in my xbox one collection um i thought you know it was a really good game and there, again there's there's a lot of stuff to do in this game especially as far as the collectibles go you know so um yeah i thought that was a pretty good game you know so the final score that will give rise of the micro i mean rise of the tumor <laughs> rise of the tumor I'm going to give this game a 9 out of 10. This game is a true 
next generation experience definitely first off there 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 should be no reason if you have an xbox one and you don't get this <laughs> you definitely should get this game uh and again some people they're waiting for it to come out on ps4 they're like yeah i'm definitely going to get rise of the tomb raider on ps4 <laughs> you know so definitely when it comes out on ps4 get it when it comes out on pc i hope it's not another i hope it's not another batman story but one you know once it comes out on pc definitely this is a game that i think you should play so really it's fun it's a fun game to play the story is pretty good and it has a replay value in the game i honestly would say that because again when the game doesn't have a online, then some people just think, oh my God, I just can't play a single player game only and then there's nothing else to do. But I think one of the reasons why they did take out the online because in the 2013 when it was so freaking tacked on, it's like, you know what? We're either going to really work on a online this time around or completely just take it out or to completely just take it out the game. And I think that's what they did, you know. So, yeah, it doesn't have a online. But for what the single player offers, 15 through 20 hours of gameplay, plus, you know, the extra things that you can do in this game, I thought this game was pretty good. Man. I'm going to give it a 9 out of a, you know, 9 out of a 10. Um, I'm honestly shocked that at the... uh at the uh vgx awards this game is actually not even in the game of the year you know uh category you know i was kind of shocked by that because it's a really good game it's a really good game man um definitely again like i said if you have xbox one get this game if you're waiting for it get the game when it comes out i was impressed by this game you know so um i hope you guys enjoyed my review of uh rise of the uh cheeks raider um and uh yeah man i just cannot wait for all these other games to come out look forward to my fallout 4 reviews sometime in uh december and stuff like that um and yeah man I'll, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i catch you on my next one all right peace